My heart is sad. Yo. I have. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Jazz in Business. Today, we will be starting the day off right because. It is a beautiful morning and I wanted to share these local products with you because I'm about to have them for breakfast. If you haven't watched my previous segments of Jazz and Business, it is all about supporting local goods. I'm interested in finding out more about these companies and individuals and sharing with you the wonderful talent, goods and services that we have here in the Philippines. Today we have a product here that I'm so excited to introduce to you guys. I have ordered this many times over because they are just that amazing. And I'm just so happy because I'm starting the day off right with these for breakfast. So, drum roll please. We have these wonderful, amazing, most incredible chocolate chip cookies by Baked by Vera. Yes, these are truly amazing. It's making my mouth water as I'm speaking. So I'm going to open these up already because I am, have just been looking forward to this since last night. And as soon as I opened the box, the smell of the cookies just wafted in my face. So let us start off with this one. Oh my goodness. Have you seen the size of these? Hand for scale, it is the size of my palm. We're having Baked by Vera's chocolate chip cookies for breakfast. And let us see how moist these are. Wow. Oh my goodness. When it comes to cookies, I love them soft and gooey. So here we go. First bite of the day. And I already know these are gonna be amazing. I am, <laughs> my mouth is watering. Let's go. Oh. <laughs> These are absolutely divine. Mmm. Thick chocolate chip cookies with moist dough. And you can just tell the chocolate is quality as well because it just has that really rich chocolatey taste. And then you wash it down with a nice cold glass of milk. It is crispy on the outside and gooey on the inside. And that is just the best texture of a chocolate chip cookie. After having that wonderful cookie, I'm just so excited to find out more about Baked by Vera. And today, Jazz and Business has an exclusive interview with the owner herself. So keep watching to find out more. So hi everyone, my name is Emmanuel Vera and I am currently a baker. I was not always, I was an entertainer for the last 10 years, entertainer slash writer. And because of the pandemic, like our industry was put on hold. So I decided to venture into other ways to make money and possibly even something that can be sustained after the pandemic. So I decided to do what I do best and that's get in the kitchen. Awesome. And how did you discover your um, passion or your skills in baking? Um, I guess it started out when there was absolutely nothing to do. So every day I was just making something new for my family, for my fiance, and we were just eating all the time. And then everyone kind of was nudging me to sell my food. It was actually my savory food that they wanted me to sell. And I was like, I don't know. I think I think I'd enjoy doing dessert more. So. Yeah. I remember seeing you post your cookies for the first time during um, the lockdown. And I was like, I wonder if she's selling these. And then you ended up posting <laughs> maybe a few weeks later that you were selling your cookies. And I was like, yes, yeah. that's amazing. <laughs> you were so, one of my first customers. <laughs> yeah. Yay. I love it. It was, it was so good. Oh, I, every time, like every time I try it, it's still like I'm eating it for the first time. I was just like, these are amazing. Oh, that's so sweet. Your yeah. reaction video is epic, by the way. <laughs> That was legit. <laughs> that was my cool. first bite, yeah. You have come up with different flavors. I've seen um, your original ones, of course, and then you've also enhanced your recipes. 
can you tell us more about your uh, the different lines that you have or other products that you're planning to um, sell? Um, disclaimer, I am ADHD, very, very severely ADHD. So um, the flavors are always changing, <laughs> but also it's like there's a, there's a case of like limited supply of certain flavors. So I started out with just regular chocolate chip and then um, it kind of morphed into a larger cookie because I found that the chemistry in the oven was much better when it was bigger. So from the small cookie to the larger cookie, and then I added flavors like oatmeal, um, chocolate chip almonds, double chocolate chip, triple chocolate chip. <laughs> and now I'm doing like a hazelnut cookie and a milk and dark chocolate. Oh my god. Oh, but I do plan on I do plan on selling other things because it gets boring to always be making the same thing, right? Cookies over and over. So I do plan on selling things like tres leches cakes oh and um, pretzels, maybe even bread eventually. I've been trying to experiment with bread lately. I saw your brioche. It looks amazing. Thank you. Oh, I've seen like everything, everything. I'm just like, okay, I hope that appears on her menu soon. <laughs> and, and even if it doesn't, just let me know. I'll send some over. <laughs> oh, thank you. You mentioned um, savory food that people told you to start selling. What what were some of the dishes that you were making at the time? Well, it's it's gonna sound hilarious because it's so simple, but like mostly pastas oh, yeah. and like baked pastas. Ooh, that is my favorite as well. <laughs> no way. Yeah. Oh yeah, we had this talk before. <laughs> What is your best seller then, out of all the things, you, uh, all the flavors you've made and products that you've made? Um, so for the longest time, well, it's always been chocolate chip, but lately a lot of people have been going back for the oatmeal cookies mm. and um, chocolate chip walnut, anything with nuts people like. You know what I love about your cookies, the chocolate chip one especially, is um, the hint of like the salt that you use, like the crystal salt that you put on top of the cookies. Uh, so good, it balances out so well. And the quality of the chocolate that you use, you could, it just blends in so well because sometimes people do make cookies and you can't really taste the chocolate that much or it's not as rich as you want it to be. So it's perfect, worth every peso. Every yeah, bite and every passo. I'm glad you noticed the details. That's awesome. Yeah. You have a great palette. Um, I think I'm just picky when it comes to cookies, really, because I love chewy cookies, and I'm just gonna say it over and over again. Very good, so good, delicious, and I'm very proud of you to the amount of work that you've put into it. It's difficult, oh especially during this time where you have to go out and buy your own ingredients. I know. Um, there have been shortages over the lockdown as well for the ingredients, right? Yeah, yeah like I've had to stop production several times just because I couldn't get my hands on certain ingredients. So now like my solution is as soon as they're on the shelves, I bulk buy everything. <laughs> <laughs> so that actually goes into the next question. Um, what are some of the challenges in, your, in running your business? Well, first challenge really is the lack of manpower. I mean, it's just me and I have someone to help me out, but nobody who I can really pass the baking off to. Yeah. Which is important. Like if you want your business to grow, you need someone you can trust with your recipe and, and with the, the science of baking. Mm -hmm. But I haven't been able to find anyone. And people have been telling me, don't give your recipe away, don't give it away. So I'm like, how am I supposed to grow this? Yeah. So the big challenge of like the growing pains, like when do you transition into like, a bigger business how do you expand is this gonna stay home based forever or will we hit shelves you know what I mean yeah so it's just it's really it's all in the head really yeah <laughs> a lot of it have you yeah, so have you moved on to trying to expand a bit more or for now it's just you're more home based um, well I have I found a kitchen and like a commissary, awesome. but I just haven't found the manpower. So as much as I want to extend, like it's gonna take a lot of planning, strategy and preparation for like actually materializing that expansion. Aside from the challenges, what are the best parts about running your business? Um, the best parts is I'm sure you can relate. 
Um, working from home, it's, yes. it's great. You don't have to sit through traffic to get to work. You don't have to like go through the entire commuting process. You don't have to get dressed. Just get on that apron <laughs> and you're good. Um, working from home, also it's nice. And I, I know that a lot of people will be able to relate because in the pandemic, we've seen just a, an influx of small businesses. Yeah. So people are learning to not only become entrepreneurs, but also to handle every single aspect of running a business from the financials to the actual, well, in my, in my case, to the actual baking, to like buying and out and sourcing and packaging and product development. Like there's so much that goes into running a business. And when you're starting small, you as an individual learn all the different fields. Yeah. And that, that's really useful. It's handy. It is. It really is. I like how you said that because, um, you know, learning from the very basics of the business and then to the top, at least you know every aspect of it and people can't tell you, oh, you don't know how to run this business because you can say, I do, because I started from the very beginning. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Awesome, I like that. That's a great piece of advice as well. If you have one piece of advice for entrepreneurs like yourself, or people who are entering into the same field as you, what is something that you can tell them? Um, <laughs> there's so much I want to impart. <laughs> yeah. It's been a crazy learning process. So um, for everybody that wants to start their own business, first of all, I highly, highly encourage you to try starting out a new business because even if it fails, you'll have learned valuable lessons that you will never learn inside a classroom or from, from just impartation. It's you, you learn things that you can only learn on the job. Um, and I would just like to advise everyone to stay strong, stay persistent. It's gonna get really tough. You're gonna cry, you're gonna burn yourself if you're in the kitchen. <laughs> things are gonna get crazy, but it's really worth the entire process. So stay the course. So thank you so much for your time, Iman. Well. Yeah. It's good to see you and good yes. talking. You too, Thanks I'll let you get back. Thank you so much like for wanting to promote the business and all. Definitely, it's worth it. You. you deserve it. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Thank you so much for joining me in today's session of Jazz in Business with our special guest, Emmanuel Vera. Head on over to her Instagram page, at Baked by Vera, where you can find out more about her products, find out about her menu and any updates that she has, and you can also place your orders there. If you haven't already, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel to find out more about these amazing people here in the Philippines, showcasing their talents and their ideas through their businesses. I will see you again in the next episode. Bye. Bye.